Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I'd like to talk for just a moment about key clicks, a phenomenon called key clicks. You won't encounter this very often these days in well-designed transmitters, but occasionally you will hear this phenomenon. Let's just look for a moment at an amplitude versus time rendition of the envelope of a CW or Morse code keyed signal. And let's just suppose that we look at the letter A as it might appear on an oscilloscope with time on the horizontal axis, signal amplitude on the vertical axis. You would see something like that. Dida dot dash. The dash is three times as long as the dot and the space between the dot and the dash is equal to the time it takes for one dot. So this uh, right here on the left is the dot, there's the dash, there's the space. CW can be thought of as on-off keying bit by bit where a bit is the length of one dot. So a dash is three bits long and a space between the dot and the dash is one bit long in a perfectly timed letter A in Morse code. So as time goes by it comes out da da like that. Well when you look very carefully at the amplitude versus time envelope of a signal like this. You should see slightly rounded corners. Right here, 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 and here. These corners shouldn't be perfectly square. If they are, it indicates an an extremely rapid transition between the space condition, which is key up, and the mark condition, which is key down. So if these corners, like this, are too sharp, the transition here will be too rapid. And if that transition is too rapid, it will generate spurious emissions on either side of the signal itself. The bandwidth of the signal will become excessive. And these abrupt transitions right here will create little pops at frequencies well above and below the signal frequency. So what I'd like to do now is show you what a proper CW signal looks like, what the moons of Saturn look like, and what an improperly uh, formed CW signal looks like on a different kind of display called a spectrum analyzer display. You've probably heard of these things and certainly seen them if you've read very much of QST magazine. Why that little thing popped up in there is completely beyond me. I must have touched something on the screen of this Surface Pro 2. But here on the horizontal axis is frequency. And amplitude well, I'll try a little harder to draw a straight line there. You get old, you know, things happen. There's the amplitude right there. Now, the frequency of the signal is right here in the center. 
So a perfectly formed CW signal should have a very narrow bandwidth. We might say, we might break this frequency scale into divisions of one kilohertz a piece and say that to the right of this center frequency is frequencies that are above the signal frequency and to the left frequencies that are below. They call this a frequency domain graph because the domain of the function is frequency. Amplitude depends on frequency so the independent variable is frequency and the axis of the frequency is therefore called the domain of the function. Do you remember that from your math courses? Well, I don't know. Kind of beside the point, but that's what the signal should look like in a properly formed CW Morse code transmission. As the code goes on and off, and you watch a display like this, you'll see this line go up and down and up and down and up and down. And in fact, a lot of receivers these days have the ability to display that kind of thing. They call it a panoramic, they call it panoramic reception. So you can actually see where other signals might be on the band as you are receiving on a particular band and here's the signal that you're tuned to except of course you need to take into account the frequency offset this is not your local oscillator frequency that's either a little above or below but there's CW signals as they would appear perfectly formed well there, well, that was my start page in case you, I, I know what it is. My thumb is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen here. Sorry about all this, but you'll bear with me and just go ahead and laugh at my bloopers. They make things a little more interesting anyway. There is your signal properly formed. Now, if you have key clicks and those transitions are too rapid, you're going to get energy on either side of the signal. Every time you put the key down or pull it up, depending on the nature of the malfunction in your radio, all this noise will appear above and below your signal and that is illegal. That is illegal. Because it exceeds the bandwidth allotted for CW emissions and moreover uh, it will interfere with other st uh, s stations on the band. You, have you ever heard key clicks? Because if you have you know how annoying it can be. Sometimes a noise blanker can help with those but not always. Well like I said key clicks are very very rare these days. Key clicks are very, very rare because most hams use transmitters that are designed to properly shape the CW waveform or the CW envelope. But a few people, especially in some of the lesser developed countries, still use old radios that may have key clicks. I can remember some of those. I shall not name them, but I can remember operating some of them and having people tell me that I had key clicks. Stangibilisco, well, I haven't had anybody tell me that lately. Stangibilisco W1GV signing off saying 73, don't get key clicks. So long. <laughs>